at this. It's a Friday and this thing is packed. It's filled all the way till the last parking uh, lane here on this side. Oh, it's gonna be good, it's gonna be good. So what's up guys, Disney Nuts here. How are you guys doing? So you can see today I am at Epcot and I'm just gonna walk around, take some photos and take you along with me so you guys can see what I do here. And you know, settings and photos and night shots and tripod and all that other fun stuff. Uh, so tag along. So here we go, we've arrived officially. That box, so we're walking to the World Showcase uh, right here just across before we get to the land. Here to the left you got actually this uh, pond and the uh, monorail beam and this spot is awesome for photos. Like look at this. Look at this uh, reflection here. Now one of the cool things of Festival of the Holidays is that each of these countries have like a narrator telling stories. So here's a guy back here telling the story. I'll put a little clip of it for you guys to check it out. That single card caught the attention of an English gift book company that had a thousand lithograph copies made, which they sold. Here's some more decorations here at the UK Pavilion. As you saw, we exited uh, Epcot because we're going to come over here to what is the Yon Beach Club to check out the decorations here. Okay, now while it is a little walk from uh, Epcot to the Yon Beach Club, it's way worth it because you're going to go see now the uh, gingerbread stuff and all the decorations they have here. So, um, yeah, make sure you make the trip now. You need to be back before the park closes Epcot because we need to come back to the entrance here at the World Showcase Gateway. So. Now you're probably wondering why am I walking around here and not taking photos of the tree and other stuff. Because one thing I like to do is usually go to the farthest point possible and do that and then work my way back. Because usually I have to pass to the front anyway. So all those photos I'm going to be able to take them anyway. So I try to do the farthest ones first and work my way to the front. Okay, so now when it comes to these two resorts, one usually has the really cool tree and the other one has the really cool uh, gingerbread uh, carousel. So let's go ahead and check them out. Look at this, how cute, how cool. Okay, now while I will go in and take some photos and video for you guys, I'm going to put another video here. If not, uh, the link's not here. Actually, I'll be posting it shortly of a full close-up of the whole thing because it's pretty amazing. Now, one thing that I love also is that you got the Christmas trees here between these two walls giving us some awesome reflections of the sides and you can take some really good photos here of your patient from either side okay let's head into the next one this is the one that's going to have the really big tree in the middle okay the next one here with the really big tree it's amazing i'm telling you i love that they have like the the boats on the tree and stuff like that uh, so it's awesome for photos and I'll show you some couple of good spots I've taken photos in here as well so if you're here you can take some good shots as well so let's go inside and check it out Now for some really good shots here, you can actually go up to these railings up here and you can take some really good shots of just the whole environment, the tree and everything. And uh, I would recommend like this corner is over here and that corner over there because head on, you're going to have this in the way so it's not going to look too good. But you can set up on the corners here and uh, around this area, as you can see, I'm here at the bridge at uh, just out of the exit of or entrance of the International Gateway. You got this bridge here and you can actually see the fireworks coming over over here. Now I haven't done um, the new fireworks from here yet, but I'm going to show you how it looks from the old ones. So you want to get an idea of how it looks from this location. And this location, you don't need a ticket or anything. So it's, uh, if you look at the shoot some shots and you're staying at any of these resorts, right there is a good spot. Now this is what used to be ESPN and uh, looks like it's not going to be the cake bake shop. 2023 and we actually uh, visited this place which was the uh, ESPN here it was so bad that we didn't want to push the video out and we, it was just the food quality was terrible we waited so long just for our seats 
and when the finally the food arrived it just tastes pretty bad so um you know i'm glad that they're putting something new here you know like i said cake bake shop 2023 now when i had a chance i come over here to this little pizza window this is possibly the only place i've seen where beer is cheaper than the pizza 875 and the pizza is 879 Okay, so we're here now at the boardwalk. We've had our pizza. We're gonna go ahead and walk around inside here. They got some really cool stuff here at the lobby. But uh, let's go ahead and check out this tree first. Okay, so let's go ahead and take some photos of this tree. Now, like for settings, I like to shoot manual, even though I actually put my ISO on auto all the time. I just let the camera take care of that. And then I'll usually shoot as wide as possible. In this case, I'm shooting at 2.8. I got my trusty 16 um, millimeter ultra wide angle lens. This is uh, for the RF mount. I did a video of this. And I'm gonna shoot usually 140, 150. If I'm moving around or something like that, I mean, I'm going to, then, I'll, then I'll bring it up probably 180 or so. Uh, but usually 140, if I'm holding really still, I can get away with some shots. And then again, we're going to go up close to the tree here and take some shots and see what we get. Look at this lobby, how beautiful. And you got these trees here also. <laughs> Look at this, how amazing. There's just no way you could take any shots here. Everybody just, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It's the holidays, you know? Okay, so before the uh, morning actually starts, I'm just going to go ahead and take a couple shots here because there's actually some really great photo ops. And luckily, there's not much people walking around. And the good thing is that when you're taking shots like this with long exposure, as long as they don't stop, they won't come out on your photo. Uh, so, for example, here's what I got here. I want to give you an example. Um, I'm shooting at 5.6. F5.6 is usually my uh, sweet spot, even though they say it's F8. 5.6 is usually what I usually shoot all these long exposures. And then I put my ISO to 100 and eventually adjust the shutter speed accordingly, depending on what the exposure uh, meter tells me to put. Now, when it comes for the lens, all these shots, I'm using my ultra wide angle, which is a 16 millimeter for the RF mount. I'll put a photo of the description of what it is. Uh, but that's what I'm using here, as you can see here. Uh, 16, I got the tripod going, and my hat, and my glasses, and I do the best I can and see what I get. And we're going to be walking around a little bit more around this area. Since you can see, there's not much people around here, so take advantage and um, see what you will get. Okay, now another tip that I'd like to recommend is always try different angles because um, I just find that many of us Disney photographers repeat the same shots over and over and over. And it's good to try to get the shot once, you know, and 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 you know, get inspired by somebody's other photography, but always try something different. Like for example, um, like I was up there on top of the, the Japan uh, balcony and I've shot from there so many times that it, I was like, okay, great. You know, it's an easy shot and all stuff. But I, I moved out because I wanted to try something different and, you know, try to break the norm. So right now, as you can see here, I am actually uh, across the Japan pavilion here and I got in front of me what is Spaceship Earth. 
so I'm gonna try um, you know just for you so you guys can see what I'm doing here uh, maybe when the show starts I'm gonna try to see if I could put on the 85 millimeter lens and shoot the uh, the projection in the middle but I'm not too much interested in the firework because I've done that a bunch of times so um, yeah this is this is what happens usually I, I, I usually come with a plan and then when I'm walking around I see other things and I shoot that stuff instead and it's all about you know trying different things and, and uh, you know and not trying always to do the same thing over and over you know and that's how you somewhat improve because you try different angles different situations and different lenses and stuff like that so I'll be totally honest with you usually when it's shots like this where uh, there's dark and there's you know certain parts that are bright and certain parts that are dark I usually try to bracket those shots and bracketing means where you actually take three different shots at uh, different exposures one underexposed one normal one overexposed to get all those details then using Lightroom you actually combine the three of them I'm going to put a link up here to uh, to a video that I did which talks about how to bracket photos and how to set the camera and uh, that way you can then combine those three shots and make a you know have everything balanced which is always something that I try to do and I always tell everybody try to balance everything out and, and that way everything looks normal and looks you know nice and smooth I know it sounds cheesy but I always tell people you know try to balance everything out and, and, and when it comes to the exposure and when it comes to bracketing uh, people a lot of people they take a bunch of shots like 10 12 and stuff like that. I only do three shots to be honest with you one underexposed one normal and one overexposed and that should be enough to be able to get all the details that you want to do okay so we're now here at the USA pavilion and taking advantage of this tree and then the moon is actually right there now when I'm doing my camera yeah, I actually put it sideways as you can see here with that where we like put the ultra wide angle lens and we get the whole tree from top to bottom even though we're really close up to it like this now of course i know it looks all blurry but we'll we'll share photos of this until you guys see them and now i'm going to be shooting at a higher f-stop f16 and shooting at f16 gives these these light bulbs a little pop which you'll see in this photo okay now even though we are using a tripod try different angles for example um, what i'm doing right now as you can see i'm going to be shooting all the way from the bottom upwards so I can get the poinsettias and the other good stuff in the frame. So when you bring a tripod, it doesn't mean you have to be shooting direct, you know, or, or shooting high or stuff like that. Try from different angles, even if you got a tripod, put it the lowest possible and see what you get. You can always get some really cool ideas. Okay, here's the USA Pavilion from the other side. Look at this. Literally uh, almost, almost no one here. Now as we slowly walk out here of here at Epcot, you can see the crowds are less and less as we walk out. Uh, make sure you pick a direction that you want to do because once you go one direction you're not going to be able to come back to the other because there are people here making sure that you don't you know uh, turn around and walk around the other way because eventually they have to leave so pick wisely which way you want to go to do your uh, exit in my case we're actually going to go in towards the uh, Germany pavilion I was curious to try France but I've shot France a bunch of times so and I love the decorations at Germany the walls provide some really cool textures when you shoot them uh, and then the decoration just adds the icing on the cake so we're gonna head this way look at this pretty cool right and we got the camera here on the tripod okay now what's funny of the shot behind me this was probably the first shot that I did with a long exposure that really opened up my eyes um, I think I've mentioned this a bunch of times in other videos uh, but it was Italy where I put the camera down and I shot a couple of stuff and it was nighttime and I did like my first ISO 100 shot you know and it was so cool and I loved the detail and I loved how crisp and good it looked so this was probably like one of my the first locations that I shot long exposure and I have been doing it ever since. Here's uh, another shot with this camera right now. Okay, nothing fancy here. Uh, four seconds, which is what the exposure uh, tells me what it is. If I hit the shutter speed halfway, it tells me what it's going to be right there in the middle. And uh, f5.6 and ISO 100. And then depending what this is, is what I'll adjust my shutter speed to. Okay, the next pavilion up is Germany as you can see here it's pretty pretty much empty a couple of people still walking out um, which is pretty interesting because people when they see stuff like this they think that the park is empty 
But if I flip the camera around, you'll see that there's people still walking uh, out behind me. So uh, yeah, let's take some more shots here. Here's another shot here of Germany uh, with nobody really. Just me here taking shots. Very cool. We got the camera, doing a long exposure. Okay, here's what empty China looks like. Look at this. Well, I like There's actually two people here, three people taking photos, but yeah, here's uh, China right now. Look at this, how cool. The next shot that we're taking now i like to use the floor if you can many of the places have uh, like the markings on the floor i think it's a little too dark here for you guys to see but uh usually you could use the lines to be able to make sure you're, you're you know dead center like this um so take advantage of the stuff and if you add a little light that you can point on the floor to see where you're going even better okay we're now coming up to norway it looks like something's going on here maybe some uh family activity or something Tons of people. <laughs> Many people say that I'm always stay here and I'm the last one, but uh, it's rarely the case. As you can see, there's always people walking around, last minute people, you know, like those. You can see they're just walking out right now behind me. Um, so, yeah. Okay, we're coming up now on the Mexico Pavilion. Rare to see it with uh, no line, uh, you know, coming out of all doors here. There we go, look at that. Here's another quick view here. By one straggler there behind me. And we're coming up on the main event, which is the tree here, just before you enter the World Showcase. I'm going to take a couple of shots of that as well. Oh, we're just going to wait a little bit for the people to clear out here. And we'll take a couple of shots from, uh, from the back and from the front. Okay, now another thing that I'd like to mention, as for coming into the park, you can come in all the way up to uh, probably like the last moment before the park actually closes. But uh, I like to come in probably a couple of hours before, four, five hours. Uh, I would not recommend, you know, rope dropping and trying to stay all the way to the night. Uh, if, if that's the case because you're traveling, well, yeah, you can do it. But you're just going to feel being destroyed up all for the next day. So what I like to recommend is probably come in a couple of hours, you know, before closing and dedicate it to that. So that way you can roam around a little bit. And as for roaming around, you probably get an hour, hour and a half. Uh, here at Epcot and uh, the advantage is that since uh, many many of the restaurants are still open uh, you can still walk around a little bit monorail so it looks like we're not going to be able to take photos of the tree it looks like there's something going on like a vent that's after hours here um i can hear the music i think you can hear it also and there's some people here behind me they're all dressed up so um i think that it's going to be a fail be able to take the, that tree be here behind us so we'll have to come another day for it uh, to be able to get it without anybody that's okay i think we've gotten plenty of other good shots here okay we're getting close to the end of the night here here's uh, one more shot of this which i think looks pretty cool and we're taking it again with that 16 millimeter ultra wide angle lens f5.6 iso 100 here's how the shot looks okay there's just a massive influx of people coming in it's almost 10 30 and i asked it looks like there's a pride event going on okay now a couple of things when shooting spaceship earth the good thing is that since it's so bright you can actually shoot uh, at least some acceptable photos handheld so if you want to get like really close and stuff like that or you're just sure on time which is what i do sometimes here at the end you can just you know take the thing off of the tripod and when it's um, lit up, like right now, not exactly like this, but when it's full lit up as a color, you can, you know, just walk up to it and take some really cool shots. And as long as you don't, you know, put the shutter speed at least one, one sixtieth, something like that, 80, 100, you know, and keep those elbows in and the camera still, you'll be able to get some good shots without having to use a tripod. But if you have the tripod, it doesn't hurt to use it. Okay, we just need to take one more shot, which is the entrance sign here, which is the, uh, uh, the festival of the holidays which has the trees and everything lit up and then we'll we can call it a wrap of the you know wrap up the day now here's the same thing As you can see i'm using the lines on the on the pavement to try to line this up as best as possible 
They're not always perfect, but at least it serves as a guide. And just like that, we say goodnight to Epcot. What an awesome day. That's it here from Epcot. Hopefully you enjoyed this video of walking around with me. And if you like these types of videos, let me know. Put it down in the comments, you know, what you'd like to see me do. And I'll gladly take you along with me to the next park or the next suggestion. In this case, it was Epcot, which is one of my favorites because I love the sunsets here. And I love shooting at night uh, because uh, there's just so many details that you can catch here. So again, thanks for watching. And if you are already a subscriber of this channel, thank you again. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. That way we can we keep these videos flowing for you guys. Until then, that's Lewis, Disney Nuts here from Epcot. Signing out. Good night. See ya. Bye. This is usually how it is when you're the one of the last ones out. You know, and your car is usually the farthest. You just have to do the walk in the parking lot alone here. We'll get there eventually.